Welcome back for another training session in OpenDSSG. In this video, we're going to talk about how to add and configure smart inverters in any application that you have modeled in OpenDSS. So for that, I brought this model that is very familiar to many of us, which is the IEEE 123 test node feeder. However, this version of the, of the feeder, which is provided with OpenDSSG, it's, uh, it has some modifications to make it more interesting. In this case, we have three different PV systems across the model, plus uh, some uh, breakers, recloasers, uh, well, and well, other other features that are native with uh, with the with the model. So first, I'm going to bring those in. I'm going to highlight the substation location. I'm going to highlight also the PV systems that we have added, changing the color. I'm going to make those red. These three are and the, at the locations you can see. Uh, the system normally is divided in five zones, but in this case, uh, well, we can say the PV systems comprehend only zones one, three, and five. We can see the transformers, and also we have some capacitors at the end of the feeder, which is the top, the bright part of the model. I'm gonna highlight those in orange, uh, well, kind of dark orange, so we can see them all. So I, as I expected, probably we're going to have uh, higher voltages at the end of the feeder. We'll see that when we start doing the, the analysis. Also, this is the uh, solar irradiance that we are using for the PVs. And this is the load profile that we are setting for all the loads across the feeder. Those have been assigned and become pre-configured in the model. So with that, looks like we're ready to go. Okay, in simulation, let's see how the system is responding right now. For that, I'm gonna run a snapshot simulation just to see how the voltage looks around the feeder. So I'm just gonna bring the heat map in terms of voltages. We can see, well, it's a little bit messy. Some of them are under voltage, some others are over voltage. So let's go for a daily simulation to see what happens on the first 24 hours. And let's record the voltage across the feeder just to see what's the trend. So after solving one day, as we can see here on the timestamp, everything looks good. We can bring the, the scale here, the color scale, and we can see that, yes, at the end of the field, we have some voltages a little bit higher uh, or very close to the upper limit of the ANSI standard, but uh, in general, everything is within range. But let's see, let's see, the, let's see closer what's the what's the voltage profile across the whole feeder. And also, I would like to bring the power output from the PV systems. So for that, I'm gonna create a, a monitor for all the PV systems in the, in the model, which are just three, selecting this option, and I'm gonna record the powers, the powers in terms of P and Q. With that, I can see that all the monitors have been created in the meter manager. I'm gonna run another simulation, and I'm gonna bring the voltage profile just to see how it looks like. So we have the one in 3D. I'm not, going to use, I'm not going to use that one right now. I'm going to use the one in 2D. And we can see that, yes, there's one part of the feeder in which voltages are still within the ANSI limits, the upper limit. But, well, those are definitely higher than the rest of the feeder. Also, if we look at the, the PV systems, I'm going to organize them here, just put them aligned. And we will see the, the P output, the active power output. All of them are basically responding to the irradiance profile. And in terms of reactive power, we are not doing anything. It's just very close to zero. We're not delivering anything. So we can close those and proceed with the next step of the test. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add smart inverter functionalities to those feeder, to those PV systems. But before, let me check on the voltage trend across the simulation. We can see that, yeah, everything is within limits, even though it's a little bit sparse at some points. Um, well, basically, 
given the demand and the production of uh, energy by the PV systems. But otherwise, uh, they don't look pretty bad. So ideally, everything will be around one, one per unit. Uh, but well, this is not the case here. So we're going to try to fix it, use it using smart inverter functionalities. So for that, I'm going to create an in control, which can apply to storage devices and PV. And I'm going to put a name to it, just a, a default name that I'm, I want to bring here. And the first thing I'm going to define is the mode in which it's going to work. So I'm just going to press the letter M to go to the mode and select the mode I want to work on, which is the Volvar. There are different modes for the virtual control, but in this case, Volvar is the one I want to use. I'm going to bring other default values, like the reference for voltage. I'm going to use the, uh, the, the one by default. Actually, if I want to see what that property is, I can just right click and ask OpenDSSG what it is. It will tell me what, what it finds. And we can see that we have different options. This clear, in this case, I'm going to use the, the default. And finally, I have to select what's going to be the control curve. The control curve uh, could have different configurations, but if you want to learn a little bit a little bit more about this, go to the link that appears on below to check the document that describes how, you know, how uh, control curves uh, need to be defined. In this case, we have different control curves. All of these don't have that band, which means they are controlling continuously. And it can represent a challenge when you have to interact with other controls across the feeder. So, uh, well, still we have different slopes. And depending on the steepness of that slope, we're going to have a different behavior. So, for example, the last control curve, Smart Inverter 6, it's much more demanding than Smart Inverter 0. Just because of the slope, uh, the idea is to absorb or deliver reactive power just to see how the system can be can be helped, how to enable ancillary services at the point of connection. After adding the smart inverter functionalities, we also have to increase the number of control iterations because this will require a little bit more of control iterations uh, at the end. So for that, I went into the configuration menu and added some more, some more, um, some more control iterations. Um, in this case, I'm bringing up all the monitors for the PV systems uh, at the same time. And we can see that now we're absorbing and delivering reactive power, something that wasn't happening before. Now I'm going to go ahead and export all those monitors to see what's going on. So we can see here the recordings for the active and reactive power. I'm just going to see, I'm going to focus on the reactive power. So we can see that for the first 24 hours, PVs were not delivering any, any uh, delivering or absorbing any reactive power, but now we can see that for the second day when we enabled the smart inverter functionality, well, they started doing something with that. And actually, we can see on the heat map the the effect of that because uh, the heat map now looks clearer than before. So instead of having a heat zone at the end of the feeder, we we were able to relax those uh, using the to the smart inverter functionalities. Also, we can check on the on the voltage profile, and we can see that that zone uh, is not significantly lower, but it's lower than it was before. So we're helping a little bit more. How can we keep doing this? Well, just by changing the DCAC ratio for the for the inverter was one option, or other could be also playing with the with the control curve. So in this case, I'm going to go with the steeper control curve. I'm going to apply that on the smart inverter and run the simulation again. So we can see now it's, it looks a little bit clearer, but well, it's it's better. Let's say it's within range and it's, it's, it's fine. So I'm going to export those monitors to see what happened with the reactive power. Once again, I'm going to have, I'm going to, have to organize everything manually using the DSS viewer and I'm going to deselect everything, uh, auto scale, and etc. So we can see the effect of changing the control curve on day three. We can see that the action of the inverter is more aggressive, trying to absorb or deliver more reactive power just because of the control curve. Uh, but again, this can also be, be solved uh, using a, a different DCAC ratio or just by getting a better coordination 
between the, the smart inverters and the other controls around, like cap controls and regulators. We also can see that the trend across the feeder, well, in terms of voltage, looks pretty stable. Uh, not a big difference with respect to the beginning, but uh, well, uh, it's just to show what is the effect. So basically, when you are adding smart inverter functionalities, the biggest change we're seeing at the point of connection in terms of voltage. Enjoy. Thank you.